The United States' commitment to Article 5 of the NATO Charter is not just a bargaining chip. It is one of the bedrock principles of our own defense and our determination to preserve peace in Europe. It's exceedingly dangerous to display any doubts to our friends and adversaries about America's commitment to the defense of NATO countries. We have witnessed recent examples of Russian aggression near the frontiers of the NATO alliance. Article 5 is the main guarantor that allies will not be attacked and the main deterrent of provocative actions by Russia that could escalate into nuclear confrontation. More broadly, it's imperative to recognize that our success in controlling weapons of mass destruction depends on cooperation with other nations and on leading, maintaining, and expanding a global consensus on nonproliferation principles. To the degree that the United States fails to develop a comprehensive strategy and fails to exercise leadership or calls its own commitments into doubt, we create opportunities for others to undercut this consensus. I've seen firsthand what can be achieved through international cooperation. For more than two decades as the United States Senator, I joined with hundreds of dedicated leaders in the United States, NATO allies, Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, many other countries who contributed to the success of the Non-Nuclear Cooperative Threat Reduction Program. The program safeguarded and destroyed a large portion of the vulnerable nuclear arsenal and infrastructure of the USSR so that it would not be susceptible to theft or diversion. Political collapse and economic hardship had left warheads, delivery systems, and technology vulnerable to diversion or sale. A vast cadre of scientists, engineers, and military personnel who had spent much of their professional careers supporting the Soviet WMD complex faced the prospect of not being paid. In essence, the political structure and financing that had kept the enormous Soviet WMD industry a tightly controlled and relatively secure system had completely broken down. The prospect of rapid proliferation of knowledge, materials, and even weapons themselves was never higher than at that moment. Executing the non-Luger program was an improbable undertaking requiring just not political and diplomatic breakthroughs, but also engineering and managerial excellence. The lesson to be learned from that experience is that extraordinary nuclear security results based on mutual interest are possible. Nuclear disasters are not inevitable if we have the will and energy to keep working for a safer world and explore innovative solutions. For the foreseeable future, the United States and the world will continue to face an existential threat from nuclear weapons. We are a long way from realizing our nuclear security goals, but I believe we can develop and strengthen the international agreements and norms that can prevent terrorists from gaining access to nuclear weapons and dissuade nuclear weapon states from using the ones they possess.